the change we had from uh, yesterday, we had two changes. Um, defensive end Yitor Gross Matos uh, did not participate in practice. Um, he has a injury as a concussion. And so he's in the concussion protocol, rather. And then for um, Kawan Short, he was limited today uh, with his foot. Otherwise, everything else stayed the same. So I will turn it over to Coach and open it up for questions. Matt, this is Brett Jensen with WBT. I'm just curious with Gross Matos and obviously with KK, if he can't go, if he's limited, how much of a concern is that going into Sunday? I, you know, it, I mean, it is it is what it is. We're going to have to uh, just work around it. Um, you know, have a lot of confidence in Zach Kerr. Bravion Roy, I thought we thought played really well this past game. And then FA will give us some flexibility to, you know, both as a defensive tackle and as a defensive end. So obviously, we'd, you know, we'd love to have uh, Yitor with us, um, but he, you know, he won't be. Um, and uh, KK is doing the best he can to get ready. So um, we'll, you know, and, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll play with, you know, the guys we expect to be out there and um, get a couple of the young guys ready. Hey, Matt, uh, what happened with Etor, if, if you don't mind? I, I think yesterday was listed with him. I... Yeah, I got, it was a one-on-one pass rush and got uh, hit in the eye. So initially it was an eye, but then I guess as the symptoms manifested, um, it was put in the protocol. Hey, hey Matt, hey. Uh, Phil Orton from Channel 9. Um, I, I'm, I'm wondering, I, I know this is your first year, but I'm wondering if you have kind of your protocols set for travel and, and obviously they're not different from what you've done in the past, but how, how kind of unique is it for some of the veterans that have traveled? Well, I don't, I don't think it's anything about me. I think for the veterans, um, for anybody that's been in the NFL, I mean, the NFL set, they've really set all the guidelines and protocols for this year uh, with COVID. So, um, you know, um, guys are used to, you know, getting to a city and going out to dinner or anything like that. Obviously, that's not, that's not able to happen this year um, as per the NFL's directives. And so, um, um, you know, I think all of us, really all, everyone across the league right this year is, is following just this, these, this new set of rules. And uh, we understand why, and we'll do a great job with it. Hey, Matt, are, you, know, are you traveling later or, or anything like that, just just to limit the time in, in the different city, or is everything just kind of kind of the same that in that regard? Uh, no, we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll leave at the same time that you know I've always left at, and going all the way back to working for Coach Coughlin. Um, you know, I, I think you know once we're at the hotel, whether we're there for eight hours or four hours, it's, you know, it's still obviously more than the fifteen minutes. You know that that. Uh, you know, could, could be, could, you know, could, is, is the time, you know, to, to, to catch something. So I think, you know, we're staying at great places. Uh, the places that we're staying are all, you know, following the strictest of, uh, you know, guidelines to make sure that we're safe. And uh, our travel team, Eddie Levin, Sean Patton, um, I know that they're doing a great job of uh, just making sure that we're distanced, that we're safe, that we're wearing masks, that everything's clean and efficient. Um, so uh, I feel really good about it. Hey, Matt, I know a lot of this doesn't have to do with you in particular, but uh, the Panthers are two and seven in one possession games since 2019, third worst in the NFL. What do you talk to with the guys in regards to who on offense is going to be the guy that makes that play, who on defense makes that play, or what else goes into those close games in particular? Yeah, I, I don't talk about the past uh, other than when you know when we first got here. We just said, hey, you know, if you go back and look at the past, you know, um, um, you know, a lot of games have come down to one score, and that's but that's really just the NFL in general. You know, I think if you watched. Yeah, I went home, I watched, you know, the, the Cowboys game. I watched the Chargers game. I mean, all those games came down to one possession. And so, um, you know, I think for, I think for us, um, obviously we weren't satisfied with it, but, you know, um, you know, I was on the call yesterday with, with the Tampa and, and um, you know, I mean, just when you think about what we've done, we, we've been practicing together and we went into that game after four weeks of actual football practice with pads, you know, um, I think our guys have done a fantastic job and should be really, really proud of how far they've come. Now that doesn't mean we're satisfied. We have to go further, but um, to have whatever it is, 30 new players, a whole new coaching staff, new schemes, and for them to be able to go out there and put together a, a, a really good effort, um, I think speaks really well about the future. And, and um, you know, we'll, we just, we just have to make one more play. And um, I don't think it'll come down to any one guy. And the real message is, is, hey, that one play happens several times throughout the game. And if you could go back to the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, if we do this differently, if we do this differently, um, the results way different. And so, you know, you don't get to hit rewind in football. You know, we have to play it the way it's played. But 
um, I'm really, really pleased with our guys in the direction that they're trending. And, and um, this is a real challenge this week. You know, we're playing a, a veteran team, a really good team. We're going to have to play uh, a really good football. Um, but it will just keep getting better and better every week. And um, I know our guys are really excited to go play this week. Matt, uh, this is Miles Simmons. Uh, I know you didn't have any turnovers, but you didn't generate any either defensively. Just how do you start to develop that, especially in a, a divisional matchup like this? Um, I mean, we, we've got to run and hit. We've got to get our hands on balls. Um, you know, we were in position a couple of times to maybe make a play and, and, and didn't. Um, and so um, – I think all of us, I think it's just, you know, me as a coach, you know, Phil is the defensive coordinator, every position coach, every player. I think all of us just, you know, saying, hey, let's just get one step better. Um, I think you'll see over time that, you know, the playbook will continue to develop um, as guys feel more and more comfortable with the things that we're doing. You know, I think you'll see our guys play faster and faster and faster. So, um, you know, um, we'll be a great defense when we generate turnovers and when we can eliminate big plays, you know, I think we only gave up three big plays. Um, we want to get that number down, but uh, you're exactly right. You know, we, we have to, we have to take the ball away and um, uh, that'll be crucial again this week. It'll be crucial really every week, you know, and so offensively, we, you know, we ask our guys to protect it defensively. Let's take it away. And, um, but I, I think you'll see as the year goes on, I think you, our guys will get more and more comfortable in the defensive scheme. We'll be able to do more and more and you'll see them flying around and, and taking the ball away. Hey, Matt, Josh, Matt. Uh, Chris, Christian McCaffrey has been getting a lot of attention today for the GQ photo shoot. I'm not sure if you've seen it. Did any of the teammates bring it up to him, maybe rib him about it? I don't know what anyone said to him. I, I did see it. Um, one of the offensive linemen showed it to me. And, uh, um, I, you know, I'm just, I just wish someone would ask me to do something like that. Hey, Coach Chris Jenkins with Charlotte Vibe. Can you talk about your observations from practice today and things you may need to work on from it as well? I thought today was a, was a, was one of our best practices. I thought there was spirit, there was energy, uh, there was attention to detail. Um, you know, it was a driving rainstorm here, so we went into the into the dome, the atrium dome, and um, you know worked together really well. Um, turned the heat way up, got the you know the you know the humidity in there up to like 93, 94, which will simulate what it'll be like on Sunday. So I, I was really pleased. Obviously, I just walked off the field. I still have my whistle on. But, uh, um, you know, I have to go watch the tape always to see, you know, exactly what we did right and did wrong. But in terms of energy, spirit, and, you know, and, and again, flying around and coachability, I thought it was one of our best days. Hey, Matt, uh, it looks like Chris Godwin is in the concussion protocol uh, and might not be able to go. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the difference between um, Scott Miller and Chris Godwin, and what kind of challenges Miller can present for um, for your uh, for your defense? Well, um, you know Miller is a dynamic player, and um, you can tell he really has a connection with the quarterback with Brady. Um, really explosive, fast, quick, gets in and out of breaks, fearless. You know, big play threat down the field, underneath threat. Uh, I think he's really, really, really a special player, and um, um, you know they have a tremendous receiving core. Um, so, you know, it, it's one of those deals where if you, you know, if you try to double one guy, there's someone else that they can always go to, and that includes the tight ends. But um, I think Miller's, you know, just doing some introductory study on him early on, you could tell right away, like, hey, this guy's really, really a dynamic guy, and um, um, he'll be he'll be quite the challenge. Hey, Matt, um, Jonathan Alexander, hope you're doing well. Who are some other uh, people, you know, uh, aside from Miller and and, and and Brady, who who really stand out when you look at the film? Uh, just of their offense or of their def uh, de defense? Defense. Oh, uh, I think of that. Well, I mean, they're defensively. I mean, they're they're front. I mean, you know, they've they've got uh, Golston, you know, uh, Vita Vey. They've got uh, they've got Sue. They've got big, powerful guys inside. And I think if you go back to last year, I think they're number one in rush defense, number one in not allowing explosive runs. So, you know, they're going to bring safety pressure. They're going to load the box. You know, they're going to, they're going to, you know, make it really hard for you to run the ball. And then they're, they're going to bring pressure and they have guys who can rush. They have Jason Pierre Paul, who, you know, I was with way back at the giants way back when, and I mean, he's still a dynamic, you know, pass rusher, great player. And you know, Shaq Barrett had 19 and a half sacks last year. So, they have linebackers who can run sideline to sideline, who can cover. I mean, they're really, they've really um, invested a lot in their defense. And um, um, schematically, like I, I think I said yesterday, I think Todd Bowles does a great job. He's a, he's a great man, great coach. And, and uh, um, they, they present a lot of issues for you. They're going to load the box. They're going to bring pressure. And, um, 
you know, they, they want you to play under duress. And so to me, you know, we have got to find a way to, to, to keep Teddy clean and, and find a way to run the ball against the best rushing defense in the league. Hi, Coach. Fash Ty here with Carolina Blitz. Uh, you talked about the importance of practice and then also making an improvement from week one to week two. Do you find it easier or more difficult to coach up your players during practice after a loss? Um, you know, I don't know. That's a, that's a great, that's a great question. I think, um, uh, you know, that's, I mean, I think it just depends on the players, you know, I mean, I think, um, I think, um, after a loss, you know, you always have to balance, you know, um, Hey, let's correct this with guys, you know, being frustrated, you know, so you have to kind of balance that. I think after a win, you always have to, you know, the same truth is there. So you should coach the same way, except, you know, guys have a tendency to be happy and can, you know, maybe can get complacent. That includes coaches. So my whole thing has always been to just try to find the truth, find the good, find the bad, you know, build off the good, correct the bad. Um, I think for us, the unique thing is this is really, this past week was really our first time together, being out there, being in battle together. And, um, you know, even when you're in scrimmages, um, you know, you're going against the guys that on game day are going to, you know, be giving you energy on, on, you know, on, on a scrimmage, they're going against you then on the other sideline. So I think for all, for all of us, we're, we were able to come out of the first time being together and say, okay, this is, this is how it went. This is what we need to do. These are the things we need to improve. And um, I think real truth came out of that game. And so um, that, that's why I expect us to have our biggest jump just because this is the first chance we had a chance to see each other. Like I said, like, you know, I said to our players today, I mean, this, we're, all, we're going on week five of, of again, padded football practice together. And um, uh, so I'm, I'm really pleased with how they've gotten better. Now, the key is don't, don't have any throwaway days. You know, don't, don't go out there and go through the motions. Go out there and really try to improve and get better at the things that, that, that you need to get better at. And um, um, sometimes maybe that's easier after a loss. Maybe for some guys, maybe it's easier after a win. But I think there's always truth in both of those. And you just have to go find the truth. On that note, with the, uh, the the less amount of padded practices that teams have had, do you think early on in the year, especially with no preseason, some of these results might be across the league might be a little bit misleading? Um, I don't I don't I don't know if they'll be misleading. I mean, I think um, I think um, you know everybody's you know everybody's kind of dealing with the hard hand that they were dealt. I mean, I think. Um, just, you know, kind of looking at a lot of teams, some teams are dealing with injuries. And I think, you know, what happens in an NFL season is you have some injuries and then, you know, teams, you know, they get those guys back and they try to go make a run when everyone gets, gets back and gets healthy. And so I think it's just kind of a balance of how your roster is, how healthy you are, all, all of those things. Um, but, um, you know, I, for me, I'm just, I'm so focused on us and just trying to improve and build off the good things that we did last week and improve the things that we need to improve upon. Um, so uh, I'll be anxious to see us play this week. I'm really excited to see us play this week and um, hope that uh, hope that we go out and play our best football. Hey, Matt, uh, Steve Reed with the Associated Press. Uh, I like the glasses, by the way, they look good. <laughs> um, hey, uh, the, the Bucks were one of the, the, the few teams really that, that, that shut Christian down last year. I think they held him to 67 yards on, in, in two games. Did you go back and look at those two games and see what they did against him? Um, and if so, what did you learn from that? Um, I've watched, I've watched those games. I've watched, you know, um, offensively Joe and his staff, they break down every game. They broke down every game from last year. I think, um, it's the same thing I said earlier about what they do defensively. I mean, they, they're, they're the best run defense for a reason. Um, you know, last year they, they present real challenges to you. You know, I mean, you have, you have to take advantage of, of the opportunities that you get because they are going to play really hard. They're going to load the box and they're going to bring, they're going to, going to bring run pressures, you know, run blitzes that make it hard to run the football. And so the thing that we have to do is we have to take advantage of our opportunities when they're there. And also, you know, you know, you can't, you can't force a square peg into a round hole sometimes, you know, I mean, if, if, uh, if the other team is, is determined to take something away, then you have to be well-rounded enough that you can turn to something else. And I think that's, as we've tried to put, you know, the offense together, the, the offensive roster together, you know, adding Robbie, uh, building off, you know, uh, Curtis and DJ and, and adding Seth in and, and all the different guys we have on offense, you know, we want to be well-rounded where, you know, if, if you, if you take this away, then we can turn to this and, and, and just be able to play back and forth. And so um, that's the challenge. You know, a lot of that'll be on Teddy's shoulders to get us in the right play. And 
um, you know, it, it'll, uh, it's something we're working on right now. Hey, Matt, uh, how has Dante looked this week? And then you had mentioned maybe trying to get Eater on the field a little more with him in the protocol. Who does that, who do those snaps fall to? Um, so I, Dante's looked, Dante's looked great. Um, he looks, he looks like he'll go out there and play and, and play really well. And, um, you know, so he looks, he looks fine. Um, I think, I think, you know, part of the load at defensive end will just, you know, will be Weatherly playing more. And I think FA, you know, stepping into that role, I think th those are really the two main guys that'll, that'll play the most. Hey, Coach, this is Chris again. Similar to a previous question, how have you seen Alex Arma handle himself this week and as well as his teammates respond to him? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone thought, you know, twice about that play after that play was over. I think the good thing about this team is everybody realized that, while the game came down to one play, it wasn't necessarily just the, that one play. There were lots of plays on there. So I think everyone's just trying to handle their own business. You know, I think the defense is trying to improve. The defense knows they have to get off the field on third down, you know, stop the run better. Uh, offensively, we know we can't kick, you know, field goals in the red zone. We've got to score touchdowns. So uh, special teams wise, we can't have two penalties. I think all of us, we're, we're, we're going to be the type of team, the type of organization, hopefully, where everybody comes out of a, a loss and says, this is what I need to do better. And hopefully when we come out of a win, they say, hey, this is what I need to do better. Like, like I said, there's real truth in both. And uh, we don't want to be an um, emotional overreacting team. We want to be a team that just methodically gets better. And so Alex, uh, you know, he did a lot of good things in the game. You know, he, he converted the other third and one down inside the five for us. Um, and he'll continue to, I think, play a really big role for us. Hey, Matt. Hey, Matt uh, yesterday we got the chance to talk to you. Are you expecting the backup quarterback to still be a week-to-week -week thing now that you're in the season. And obviously, this would be a very, very horrible situation. But if you have to go to a third quarterback with P.J. Walker inactive Sunday, who is the third quarterback? Um, yeah, that is really <laughs> – that is that is sad, uh, not fun to think about. But I think I think uh, we'd probably turn to Christian or, or uh, Curtis and DJ. I think Joe has some things in there where those guys could go out there and, you know, be, um, be the quarterback. Um, to answer your question, yeah, yeah, we're taking. I mean, we're we're going to take really every position week to week. That you know, and some positions are so you know they're so clearly sewn up that you don't have to. But um, but um, I think both those quarterbacks. I mean, the great thing about what we have going on is we have two young quarterbacks that we believe can win and be starting quarterbacks. And so um, you know, when we finish practice, we have a twos. You know, the twos get get extra reps so that we continue to develop the whole group and and both as well as both those quarterbacks. So. Yeah, I would anticipate anticipate that being a, a week a week by week um, d decision. Hey, we'll take uh, one more question. This will be the last question, Josh. Sure, uh, Matt. Yesterday we got to talk to Russell Okung, and when we were asking him kind of what his thoughts were on on the week one performance of the offensive line, he really kept harping in on that fourth and one play and said, you know, when we can't pick up a, a half yard, it's hard for me to evaluate the rest of the game um, because we failed at our job. Is that the kind of is that what you want from your veteran leadership? Is to say, you know, if we can't pick up a half yard, what are we doing out there? Um, and, and what kind of role does he does he play? You know, after a loss in bringing the guys back. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. Um, I think I think Russell's one of the the finest uh, leaders. You know, now we've, I've only been through one week with him, but just watching him day in and day out, and the way that he thinks about what he says before he says it, and the way people respond to him, he's one of the finest leaders. Um, you know that I've that I've ever been around, and I I look forward to really enjoying his leadership and and, and learning from it as the year continues. Um, I think that sort of introspective, hey, let me not worry about everyone else. Let me look look at myself and. As an offensive line, I think they do that as a group. I think that's exactly what we're looking for from everybody, right? We don't want to be a team that points fingers. You know, we want to be a team that everyone says, hey, how can I get better? And I think there's real power in that. When you realize that, hey, I'm in control of me and the way that I play and I can improve, then you're never powerless. You always have the power to improve. Um, so um, I, I, I don't have any – I mean, we're so early in the season. I think our guys realize that we're just going to keep building, building, building and, and get better and better and better and – this is a day by day, week by week, you know, process that, 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 um, you know, we went out there the week one, you know, we did some good things, but at the end of the day, we didn't get the mission done. And so, you know, we have that mission for that week to go one and oh, we didn't get it done. Um, everyone took ownership of it. I think that's great. I don't think that minimizes the things, you know, just globally that we're doing. We have to continue to build off those, 
we have another chance this week to go one and oh we have a, a mission this week we're going to try to do our best to try to to try to you know do everything we can to to go out there and play um our best football and find a way to go one and oh and whatever happens in that game we'll come back we'll we'll look at the tape we'll see the truth we'll be honest with ourselves and then we'll get ready for the next one and that that to me is um that to me is easy for a coach to say but when you have veterans like russell who are living it who believe in it then it's it's that much better and that much easier to, to, to build a program and build a team. So um, I'm grateful for him and, and hopefully we can continue to build off that. All right. Thank you very much, coach. Thanks everyone. Thank you, coach.